In this video, I'm going to take Eliza from this, this basic form I've left her with in the tutorial so far and show you how we can make her walk and jump and, and do some basic actions like that. So uh, what I've shown so far is we have her idle animation and we have, so when you press the S button, uh, she swings her sword like that and then I, I made something where if you press the left arrow, she slides along the ground. So, uh, so we're going to press Control E and go into the editor and then we're going to press the code button to, to load up her code. And so, so we see here, this is her code. Uh, we see uh, that, that the stand animation repeats, that when we end her attack animation, we go back into her stand animation. Uh, and when you press the, the tongue button, which is the S button, uh, it starts into her attack animation. And then this on process, uh, if we detect a press of the left control, the left arrow, uh, then it'll it'll shift to X across by two, and then we have her the definitions of her animations. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add a new animation. We have her stand animation and we have her attack animation, and we can see that the we have these animation preview widgets that uh, come up when we just when we click on either of the code for the animation. So uh, to make a walk animation, we'll base it off the stand animation. So I'm going to select all that, and then I'm going to copy it and paste it in there, and I'm going to change the name to walk. And then we want to select the walking. So uh, what's really nice about this uh, interface here is I can just click on here, and because it has the red rectangles uh, in the image, it automatically recognizes the walking animation. Uh, now we can see it's, it's walking here. Uh, it is going in reverse because for a idle animation, you want it to go uh, forward and then backwards, but that's not desirable for a walk animation. You just want it to cycle through, so I'm going to delete that flag. Uh, and then the speed is perhaps a little fast, so let's change this duration here. We could go this way to make it faster, or we can go here to make it slower. I think that's a little too slow. I like it at 6, I think. Uh, and so then uh, we want to make it so that uh, sh she actually starts walking uh, when we press the left control or the, the right control, so the left arrow or the right arrow. So what we want to do is on process, uh, we want to say if we detect uh, left or right being pressed, uh, then make her start walking. So I'll make it change this here to control left or control right. Uh, and to start walking, she has to be in her, her standing animation. Uh, however, there might be some other animations that she could also be in. So, uh, like, so we might add more animations later uh, that that she could also be in to qualify to be able to start walking. So what we will do is we'll say an animation in stand. So then later, if there's some other animation, uh, we could just add it to the list here. Uh, and then if this happens, we want to start her walking. So we want to uh, set her animation to the walk animation. And what we also want to do is we want to set the facing correctly too, so that if left is pressed, she starts facing to the left, and if right is pressed, she faces to the right. So we're going to set the facing to, if left is pressed, to negative one means face left, and one means face right. So we do that, and let's, let's try this out. Uh, so we press right, and she starts walking, uh, and then we can see that she pauses at the end of her walk, and that's because her walk doesn't cycle. Her walk goes to the end of the walk animation, and then it just freezes there. So we need to put a handler for uh, for on end walk anim. So we'll do that. So on the end of her walking, uh, we'll set the animation to make her continue walking. And we, can, we did that, and, and it instantly takes effect. Uh, now, of course, we don't have any exit condition for her walking, so I just press the arrow button, and I'm not holding it now, and she's just going to continue walking forever. So what we want to do is, while she's walking, we want to test if, she's, uh, if we're no longer pressing the arrow button. So we're going to add a handler. We could do this in on process, because on process uh, is executed every... Uh, every cycle, but on process walk means uh, is an event that will be executed every cycle while she's in her walk animation. So, uh, uh, so since that's a narrower criteria, it'll it'll be better to use. Uh, 
Uh, so on process walk, we say if we're not pressing control left or control right, then uh, then we want to uh, set her animation to standing. And we can see that that's already taken effect. Uh, now, one other thing we want to do, and this is a little bit subtle, but if somebody started to press to the left, and then they press to the right at the same time, and then they let go of the left, as it stands, she would keep on walking to the left, because that's what she started doing. So, uh, in on-process walk, uh, we want to actually uh, set her, her facing. And, I don't, I, in fact, we can probably just move this code up here to be in the... Uh, in the on facing instead. So let's cut that out there. Uh, and let's put it else. So if we're not pressing control left or control right, then we go into stand. Otherwise, we set our facing and we make sure our facing is, uh, is correct. Uh, so we make sure our facing is, uh, if, if they're holding left, it'll be to the left. If they're right, it'll be to the right. If they're holding left and right, we can make an arbitrary choice. I, I think that's fine. Uh, so let's try that out. So I'm holding to the right, let go, hold to the left, hold both. Uh, and then actually if we hold both, it stops and that, that's fine too. Uh, and so that looks perfect. We we can walk left and we can walk right. So of course, we want her to actually move when she's walking. So uh, so to do that, the easiest way to do that is in her walk animation, all her animations we previously gave a Y acceleration to give her gravity. Uh, let's give an X acceleration to, uh, to make her actually move. And the X acceleration will have to be uh, much greater actually to overcome uh, friction that we're about to add. And so we start her doing that, and as you can see, she actually flies very quickly off the screen, and that's uh, that's because at the moment she doesn't have a friction setting. But before we add friction, let's go ahead and make our map a little a little bit larger to work with, so we can kind of actually see what what's going on. Let's add a little ledge here for when we add jumping. Also, uh, so let's add this, make this bigger, make the level a little bit bigger, and. Just like that. Yeah. Okay. So now let's try that again. See how she she just flies off the screen like crazy. So we want to give her a friction setting, which is a global setting, which we'll set up here. Let's set her friction to two thousand. Uh, and these are kind of arbitrary numbers that you'll have to you'll have to play with. They, they do have a meaning, but uh, but in the end you just kind of play with them. And so mm, I think that looks that looks quite good. Uh, you can see she'll continue sliding when she's standing, which I'll explain in a minute. But I think her speed is reasonable. Uh, let, let's actually take care of making her stop. So the way that these Excel settings work is if Excel X is set to, say, 1000, that means that when she starts the walking uh, for animation, she will uh, have her X acceleration set to 1000. Uh, now, this is the same as if we put an event handler which said, you know, on begin, walk, anim, uh, set anime, set uh, Excel X to a thousand. So this is kind of a convenience for that. Now, because stand doesn't have an Excel X setting, uh, when she enters her stand animation, the X acceleration isn't affected at all. It, it's just, uh, it, it just leaves it out where it was. So what we want to do is we want to put something explicit in stand, which says when she goes into standing, uh, then, then cut out her acceleration, set her acceleration to zero. So let's see how this works. We do that, and we can see that works nicely. Uh, now, the other thing is that we'll see how this interacts with her attacking, where right now, if you attack while you're moving, she kind of continues to slide along. And we could we could nerf that if we wanted by, uh, by doing the same thing with attack. However, if we try that out, I think that although it's probably slightly kind of more realistic, I think it's awkward for a game to, to do that, like she walks and then she kind of stops. Uh, 
I think it's kind of going to make the game feel better if she can just walk and just continue uh, slashing away. So uh, I'd actually prefer to remove that, I think, and uh, and keep this behavior. Yeah, I, I like that better. So uh, I think that with the walk, we probably want to take her acceleration up a little more. Let's take it to, uh, to say, 1,200. Uh, yeah, I... Uh, Yeah, yeah, I think I like that better. Okay, so uh, so yeah, we we've we've fully implemented walking. Uh, so uh, so I I think I'll leave it there for now. And in the next video, uh, which which hopefully will be coming soon, I will show you how to implement jumping.